Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Shog Mohammed. His Royal Highness Deputy King and Crown Prince, Prince Salman bin Hamad al-Khalifa, met today with His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al-Khalifa, today at Qadaybiyah Palace, in which they discussed a number of local issues and regional and international developments. During the meeting, the Royal Highnesses expressed relief at the world's understanding of the danger of terrorist organizations on regional and international security. They affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain appreciates international stances that support all efforts to combat terrorism, including the British Parliament's resolution at the request of the British government to place a number of Bahraini illegal groups on the list of terrorist organizations in Britain. The Royal Highnesses stressed that the Bahrain continues to cooperate with its allies to combat terrorism. They also discussed the government's development plans and projects, in which they affirmed the government's keenness to adopt initiatives that ensure the optimum use of new and renewable energy to serve development and environmental protection purposes. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister received at Qadaybiyah Palace today the Amani Consultative Assembly delegation led by Chairman Khalid bin Hilal al mauli His Royal Highness the Prime Minister affirmed that this visit reflects the bahraini amani relations of cooperation, highlighting the development of historic ties between the two countries. For his part, al mauli conveyed the wishes of the Sultan of Amman, Qabus bin Said, for Bahrain of further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister requested the Amani Consultative Assembly Chairman to deliver his greetings to Sultan Qaboos. He also commended the development of Oman in all sectors and affirmed the keenness of Bahrain to enhance joint parliamentary cooperation between the two countries to achieve the aspirations of both people. Al Maouli expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his continued support, hailing the Bahraini Amani relations in all fields, wishing the kingdom further developments.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa today chaired the cabinet meeting at Qadaybiya Palace. The cabinet reviewed the speech His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa delivered during National Day celebrations. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister affirmed the government's keenness on continuing the march of development, noting that the government will take all measures to implement His Majesty's directives on protecting the kingdom against division. The cabinet expressed thanks and appreciation to the citizens of the kingdom for their noble sentiments during National Day and their participation in its celebrations. It also thanked the brotherly and friendly countries for their kind sentiments on the occasion. The cabinet hailed His Majesty's directive on naming the southern city's residential projects Khalifa Town after His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and in appreciation for His Royal Highness's achievements and efforts to serve the country. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his initiative. On the advent of the new year 2018, the Council wished Bahrain further progress and prosperity and the world peace and security. The Cabinet welcomed the British Parliament's decision to list Bahraini illegal groups as terrorist organizations, which reflects the Bahraini government's efforts to counter terrorism and international perception of the danger the violations po the organizations pose, commending the British government's efforts on the issue. The Cabinet strongly condemned the Houthi militia's launch of a ballistic missile targeting Riyadh. The ministers praised the Saudi Air Force's success in intercepting the missile and asserted the kingdom's support to all the measures Saudi Arabia takes to maintain its security and stability. The cabinet also condemned the terrorist attack that targeted Al Aish airport in Egypt and expressed support to Egypt's efforts to protect its security and stability. His Royal Highness directed to continue developing health services provided to patients, stressing the necessity to enhance monitoring systems in public and private hospitals to reduce the spread of diseases. His Royal Highness directed the Minister of Health to submit a report on the precautionary measures taken to prevent contagion. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister directed to reduce malpractices that affect the environment to maintain natural resources. His Royal Highness instructed the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism and the Ministry of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning to cooperate with the Supreme Council for Environment to the plan for the avoids to use plastic bags for the environmental damage and to find suitable alternatives. His Royal Highness urged the Ministry of Health, Specialized Authorities and the Ministry of Works to step up their precautionary measures to prevent the transmission of bird flu to the Kingdom. His Royal Highness also directed the Ministry of Works to follow up on the needs of fishermen in Umm al Haslam to provide harbour security and to investigate and take measures regarding the complaints of Salahiyya residents on land misuse. The Cabinet approved a proposal regulating the linking of renewable energy in the electricity distribution system of the Electricity and Water Authority to implement the net metering system. The Cabinet approved two proposals, the first regarding the issuance of executive regulations, replacing the current executive regulations issued in 2006 for the Patent and Utility Models Law, and the second regarding the fees for Patent and Utility Models Registration for individuals and companies. The Cabinet approved a Memorandum of Understanding in the field of renewable energy between Bahrain's Electricity and Water Authority and India's Ministry of New and Renewable Energy and appointed the Minister concerned to sign it based on the recommendation of the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs. The Cabinet also approved a Memorandum of Understanding in the field of health care between Bahrain's Ministry of Health and India's Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and referred it to the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs. Based on the justifications provided by the Ministerial Committee for Reconstruction and Infrastructure, the Cabinet approved the restoration of a draft law amending certain provisions of Law 33 of 2006 on sewage and drainage of surface water. The Cabinet referred to the Council of Representatives' draft laws regarding the organization of fishing, exploitation and protection of marine resources, the ownership of real estate and lands in Bahrain by Gulf citizens, and the care, rehabilitation and employment of people with disabilities. The Cabinet approved a proposal on the appointment of military, security and human rights attaches in Bahrain's embassies and also referred back to the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs a proposal on travel controls to some countries that pose a threat to the security and stability of Bahrain. The Military High Court today issued its ruling on the case of an 18-member terrorist cell, 10 of whom appeared in custody and 8 were fugitives inside Bahrain or abroad in Iran and Iraq. The defendants were accused with the formation of a terrorist cell, attempting to assassinate the commander-in-chief of Bahrain Defense Force and committing other terrorist crimes. The court convicted and sentenced each of the following six defendants to capital punishment, plus 15 years incarceration and revocation of citizenship. Soldier Mbarak Adil Mbarak Mhenna, Fadl Sayyid Abbas Hassan Radhi, Sayyid Alawi Hussain Alawi Hussain, Hamad Abdul Hassan Ahmed Al-Mudghawi, Murtadha Majid Ramadan Alawi Sindi, Habib Abdullah Hassan Ali Jamri. 
The court also convicted and sentenced the following seven defendants to seven years incarceration and revocation of citizenship. Muhammad Abdul Hassan Saleh al Shihabi, Muhammad Abdul Wahid, Muhammad Al Najjar, Hussein Muhammad Ahmed Shihab, Muhammad Yusuf Marhoun Al Ajmi, Hussein Ali Mohsen Bidu, Sayyid Muhammad Qasim Muhammad, and Ali Jafar Hussein Al Rayas. The court also acquitted the following five defendants Ali Ahmed Khalifa Salman Al Karbabadi, Hussein Asam Hussein Al Dirazi, Muntadar Fawzi Abdul Karim Mahdi, Rabi Ahmed Ali Al Ariash, and Muhammad Abdullah Ibrahim Abbas. All the judicial sureties are granted by the Military Judiciary in compliance with the Criminal Procedures Law 2002 and the Military Judiciary Law of 2002, including access to defense lawyers. The defendants have the right to challenge this first instance court ruling at the Military Appeals High Court and the Military Court of Cassation according to provisions of the law. Representatives of human rights institutions and societies, media channels and several relatives of the defendants attended the court session. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah, held a consultation meeting with the Chairman of the Consultative Assembly of Amman, Khalid bin Hilal Al Maouli, on the occasion of his visit to the Kingdom, along with a delegation of members and officials at the Consultative Assembly of Amman. Al Mullah affirmed the deep rooted fraternal relations between the leaderships and people of Bahrain and Amman. He attributed the development of these relations in different fields to the wise vision of His Majesty the King and the Sultan of Amman. He expressed his appreciation to Amman for supporting and unifying shared visions and for supporting the kingdom at all regional and international events. For his part, the chairman of the Consultative Assembly of Amman noted the Kingdom of Bahrain is progressing with its reform project and democratic march led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa. He added that Bahrain continues its national efforts to combat terrorism and its organizations in accordance with the procedures guaranteed by the law and the constitution. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali bin Saleh al Saleh, received today the Amani Consultative Assembly delegation led by Chairman Khalid bin Hilal al Mawali. The Shura Council hailed the strong Bahraini Amani ties, noting the progress of relations between the two countries on the economic, political, and legislative fields to achieve comprehensive development. He noted the role of the Amani Consultative Assembly in setting laws to benefit the country, affirming that the current visit will reinforce legislative relations between the two councils in both countries. He stressed the importance of enhancing cooperation between the legislative councils in the Gulf to issue unified legislations and laws in all fields to enhance the unity of all Gulf people. The meeting was attended by the first deputy chairman of the Shura Council, Jamal Mohammed Fakhru, second deputy chairman, Jamila Ali Salman, the secretary general of the Shura Council and a number of heads of committees. The Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, received today the Amani Consultative Assembly Chairman Khalid bin Hilal Al Maouli and his accompanying delegation in the presence of the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah, and MP Mbas Al Madi. The meeting was also attended by the Deputy Minister of Interior, the Inspector General, the Chief of Public Security of the Ministry's Under Secretary. The Minister of Interior welcomed the guest and the accompanying delegation, noting that the visit reflects the deep rooted fraternal relations between the leaderships and the people of Bahrain and Amman. He affirmed that the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa developed the democratic process in Bahrain and its political and legislative reforms. During the meeting, the minister commended the outstanding patriotic performance of the Bahraini Representatives Council and the Amani Consultative Assembly and their cooperation in the legislative field. He praised the role in promoting the values of national unity and strengthening the international mechanisms as partners in upholding national responsibility. The Minister of Interior briefed the Amani Consultative Assembly Chairman on the ministry's efforts to develop and update general security and order. He noted the importance of continued work to reinforce Gulf security through joint Arab action. During the meeting, bilateral relations were discussed, as well as fields of cooperation and issues of common concern. Upon the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad al-Khalifa to allocate 48 housing, housing units across the kingdom, the Ministry of Housing announced the concluded distribution of Tubli housing projects to eligible citizens and the procedure of electing the beneficiaries union for each residential building in the project. The Ministry stated that the distribution procedure was carried out in a smooth manner amid the approval of the citizens and without any delays. The Ministry noted that the Tubli housing project is one of the main projects in the Northern Governorate, with the Ministry's work program to build 25,000 housing units. The Ministry underscored the excellent location of the project and that the units were built according to the best specifications that fit the needs of the Bahraini family. The Ministry also vowed to intensify its efforts to provide more housing units across the Kingdom to meet the housing demands in record time and with the required quality.
Bahrain Commercial Facilities Company has launched the car's biggest discount week yesterday at the Bahrain International Exhibition Center. The event is scheduled to be from the 24th of December until the 28th of December this year, which will be open to the public from 3 to 8 p.m. for five days. The chairman of the board of directors of the cars companies in Bahrain, Commercial Facilities Company, Khalid Matar, patronized the official opening ceremony of the event. Khalid Matar stated that this initiative is the first of its kind in Bahrain, where all car brands are displayed and promoted under one roof organized by Bahrain Credit and enabling customers to take advantage of this opportunity to purchase their cars at special prices and deals. Also, Mr. Matar added that this initiative will stimulate and encourage the automotive sector with a positive impact which will reflect on the Bahraini economy overall. Well, actually, Bahraini Credit is a well-known and the largest um, financier, uh, especially for the automotive business. We have very strong relationship with all the distributors in Bahrain, the approved distributors in Bahrain. And this is part of our ongoing marketing initiatives um, that we launch on an ongoing basis. And this time we thought of partnering with all the distributors to create this concept of um, a large sales showroom where all the distributors bring their vehicles, bring those vehicles that are um, under liquidation and offer them at very attractive prices. And at the same time, Bahraini Credit providing very attractive financing options for those customers who are interested in buying their own vehicles, or playing their own, replacing their own existing vehicles. Well, first of all, I want to thank Bahrain Credit Facility for this new idea, which has never been in Bahrain. I've seen it since I'm more than 42 years with the company of Toyota. This is something new for me, and I recommend to come for future next to come, which is bigger than this to come. The benefit, as I'm Toyota, I made something different prices than current showroom price to encourage the customer to have a buy by the end of the year. We are not talking about the model year. We inject the price to encourage the customer to buy fast and they can get immediately approval from BCFC. Good evening and welcome to the Business News on Bahrain International. I'm Bara Abdullah and starting with the local stocks, as Bahrain All Shares Index has closed at 1,293.23 points, marking an increase of 7.35 points above the previous closing. The increase was in the commercial banks, investment and services sectors, and investors traded mainly in the commercial banks with 74% of the total shares. 184 transactions included 10,269,914 shares worth 1,383,232 Bahraini dinars. Minister of Communications and Transportation, Engineer Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed, Chairman of the Bahrain Airport Company, chaired the meeting of the National Committee for the preparation of the new passenger terminal, which is part of the expansion program on Bahrain International Airport. Minister Engineer Kamal bin Ahmed said that the work of the airport expansion program is proceeding as planned and the assistance of the relevant parties in order to meet the timetable set for the project and to ensure the operational readiness of the new passenger building for his part, Chief Executive Officer of Bahrain Airport, Mohammed Yusuf bin Falah, said that the expansion of Bahrain Airport is one of the largest infrastructure projects in the Kingdom of Bahrain, which requires the highest level of organization and transparency to find out all the details, regardless of size. The acting chief executive officer of the Information and E-Government Authority, Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, stressed the importance of statistical work as one of the main tools contributing to determining future strategies and ensuring the current development plans are within the requirements of the government work program. 
He praised the efforts of the ministries in the coordination and continuous communication in the field of statistics and data, noting the information an e-government has issued in 2017 more than 60 statistical reports in coordination and cooperation with various government agencies. The Information and e-Government Authority.